Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University and Titans Episode 6. Excuse my voice. So, this was probably the best episode yet. I know, I said that with both of the previous episodes, right? <laughs> no, this one was even better. In, in for, for a Titans episode, let's just leave Episode 4, uh, the one with the Doom Patrol, alone. That, that pretty much exists outside of continuity anyway. Uh, the episode was perfect. Until all of a sudden the Titans showed up. And it's like you just screwed everything up, you know? Um, that that was an episode onto its own. This episode was better than the previous episode, though. And that's saying a lot. Because the, the previous episode was great. <coughs> <coughs> so, what we get to see here is a funeral for um, uh, Dick Grayson basically saying goodbye to his family with his other family, all right, the rest of his family, so to speak, his extended circus family from Haley Circus. Uh, that was gorgeous. God, I could not have imagined a better episode. Just that alone, adding members from the um, from Haley Circus there, gave the origin that Two Face was connected with Zuko, and and that these guys were. You can go and check out uh, uh, Nightwing explained in a minute on Comic Book University, one of my longer in a minute <laughs> videos. I still get people complaining. Just explain in a minute. I see that it's two and a half minutes. Shut up, moron. <laughs> it's like, if that's the only complaint you have, you're welcome. Anyway, um, uh, so anyway, you have this, uh, um, th this, this situation where the son of Zuko's son, basically, he decides that, well, my father killed your family, but you allowed for my father to die, which made it so that the, the um, uh, what do you call it, the rest of my family, including my fiancé, was murdered by the Mafia. So, therefore, since you allowed my father to die because you were pissed off that he killed your family, I'm going to kill your circus family now. This is the very definition of a Batman villain. I mean, like, holy crap, that is perfect. I mean, it's the Melting Man. You'd figure that he would have been a part of the Sinestro Corps, right? <laughs> Not here, apparently. Uh, maybe in the future, though. Maybe in the future. But he just didn't really do a whole lot for me in this. He was really just some whiny little kid. Like, when, when push comes to shove, this was really just a whiny kid. His backstory was great. Um... I don't know anything about the actor. I don't know if he's actually good at acting or not. In this, it was just he just came off as nothing but whiny, uh, like the typical tropey villain, uh, as far as his acting is concerned. You allowed for this to happen. You might as well have killed everybody. You might as well have done that. You'll sit for it. Shut up, dude. Shut up. Shut up, you whiny little mealy mouth punk. All right. That being said, with the actor, dude, I've, I've got my loves, I've got my hates, and I got everything in between. Um, he just sounded like a whiny little kid who didn't get the, you know, the, the toy that he wanted at the store. Shut up and grow up, all right? But the backstory and everything, fantastic. Like I said, the ideal Batman villain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, what have you? Um, uh, Jason Todd in this. Okay. I may have, I may have brought out a little bit of a... Um, uh, a laugh fest about his 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 hair, <laughs> right? The Jason Todd character. Wow, this character is just so well done. Okay, so here's what I want. I want a Jason Todd TV series. <laughs> I know it's too. I'm, I wanted this series. I wanted that series. I want all these different series. And I know we're not going to get them all. All right, I get it. But holy crap, I love his character. His character is awesome. All right, it's. It's just similar enough to his original character, you know, to his comic book character, I should say, that it's perfect. You, you get to see him. He seems like an open book, right? He seems like an open book. Uh, this would be like uh, in art therapy, all right? You have a, a kid draw a house, a picture of a house, all right? If the curtains are open, they're willing to tell you about their story. If the curtains are closed, it's still they don't trust you. Because right, they know that you're the audience for, you know, for, for the, the picture, right? Um, maybe the curtain, in this particular case, it's like the curtains are open, but the, the window is above the door. <laughs> Meaning that you'll be able to see everything that I'm okay with you see. You can see whatever you want to see. I'll tell you everything about my life, but you got to work for it a little bit. All right, you got to maybe get on a step stool or a ladder and, and to be able to look in. Um, 
That is awesome. I love that. There's so much depth to his character. It's insane. You know, say yes, he's he was always violent. The the whole part about him beating up on cops towards the end, such a great add-in to his story. Because you could see that, you know, like the kid was an orphan. He uh, he didn't have Bruce Wayne to take him in. This, like, Jason Todd is that character who you either love Jason Todd and hate Nightwing or vice versa. And no, that's not for everybody. I'm saying in general. Here, you could see that they're the exact same character. Um, what... The, the, the Atlas guy, the strong man from the circus, all right? I love that guy. I love that guy, but I feel so sad for him, man. He, he's just one of the people, like, you know, so many people in society. They figure you're going to have a good life based on what? How rich you are. Or in Bruce Wayne's case, how wealthy you are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Difference. Um, that's, that's sad. Unfortunately, there's so many of us who feel the exact, the exact same way, that money is somehow going to buy us happiness. And meanwhile, you've missed out on everything else, you know, that's around you in the pursuit of money, whether you get it or not. So that, oh God, that was so sad. But I get it. I get it when you don't have anything, you know. Uh, here's one of the things that I like about this this TV series that I'm liking a lot, okay. Uh, and see if you if you notice the the difference between this and many other TV series, and I'm not talking about other superhero series. I'm going to compare this outside of regular superhero series because it deserves it. So many TV series that we watch, so many TV shows, you've got people who are dealing with problems, like there's a problem in their life and they've got to figure out a way to try and deal with it and blah, 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 blah. But what's the big thing about it that is typically the same? Money. Money is not the issue. If money is the issue, then that is the issue, all right? If the if the characters are supposed to be uh, struggling with money, then that's the one problem that they have is trying to find money, you know? Uh, but if the, if money is not the problem they're looking for, if it's, um, I, I was just, we started watching a TV, uh, a movie, I don't, something on Netflix, I don't remember what it was called, Gwyneth Paltrow's in it, and her kid is apparently going to be trans. Uh, we wound up turning it off because the acting in it was just absolutely horrible, terrible tropes and everything. But um, the problem was that the ki the problem was that the kid was trans, and the the mother had to really deal with it. Um, uh, what do you call it? And one of the first things I said was, "It's cool. You know why they can actually try and handle this problem and only focus on this problem? Because look at them. They got a very good house. Both of them have good jobs. You know what I'm saying? Like great jobs." Uh, money is not an issue for these guys. They're they're struggling to try and get their kids in some private kindergarten program that very few people are accepted into every year. Wow. I, I must say, uh, this is a great show because it's showing some of the problems of modern day society. This has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with modern day society because these people have money and your average person in America, even Canada, doesn't. All right. I'm cool with not being extravagantly rich. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not, can't really call myself a minimalist with all these toys, but aside from these toys, I'm kind of a minimalist. I don't actually care about stuff like that, you know? Um, uh, but, but this TV series, it's showing that, especially with this episode, and I'm hoping, really hoping that they continue with it, because it's one of the things that really makes this, this TV series so relatable. You know, um, you've got Jason Todd, who is the, the shadow of Dick Grayson. They both have a very similar story. The difference is Bruce Wayne took Dick in when Dick was still a kid. Jason Todd didn't get taken into, uh, didn't get taken in until, uh, he was much older. So they could have both had the exact same story if they were both taken in at the same time. Excuse me. That's crazy. That's great. That's what this TV, that's what this episode did with this character, with Jason Todd. Holy crap. And from that point on, like he could practically do no wrong. He could practically do no wrong because you could really feel the difference. This is like the, uh, the Ohura Mazda character in, um, uh, Zoroastrianism, the, the religion of uh, Zoroaster, the Zoroastrians. Um, Ahura Mazda is the god, and the, the devil 
in the in this uh, theology is the um, uh, what do you call it? Is his shadow for for all intents and purposes? That's crazy. That's crazy. So his hatred of cops, his his willingness to go outside of of what the Robin actually is, or, or at least making his own Robin as opposed to following in the footsteps of the previous Robin, Dick Grayson. God damn it, that is some really good storytelling. That is so good. Um, there was the the potential of seeing this this character as just, you know, he's only been studying for a year. How is he that good? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with his confidence. All right, yes, he's very good at fighting, but he didn't know who Machiavelli was, couldn't even recognize him from an image. And I think his image is pretty much out there, but whatever, I get it. You know, not a lot of people care who Machiavelli is. Um, and he sure, sure as hell couldn't quote something out of The Prince, uh, the, the main book that Machiavelli wrote. Um, but Dick Grayson did. So we could see that Dick Grayson's training has paid off in so many ways, and he's a much more well-rounded character, but that doesn't mean that Jason Todd isn't fleshed out. It's just his cockiness. You'll see it, you'll see it all the time. There are people who get into positions of leadership. They're jackasses. They don't know anything. But man, it's hard to tell because they just seem so so in charge. They seem so put together. They seem so mentally there. But in reality, you don't know anything. You really don't know anything. And if somebody quits or somebody doesn't show up this day, this particular day in work, you're screwed because you can't fill in that position. You don't know anything. <laughs> like, what can you do? What is your main skill in life? I manage people. Can you manage yourself? What do you mean? Exactly. So um, that's kind of the, the take that I've got on Jason Todd. Um uh, that, I'm going to have to throw that directly in the face of the Corey character. Okay, Corey was, was not in this episode a whole lot. She was in it more than the other Titans, you know what I'm saying? But uh, Starfire, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, she wasn't in this as much as she normally is. But the parts that she was in here, I was okay with, okay? I think that this is kind of what they need to do to get me at least, I don't know about anybody else, but to get me at least back into the idea of Starfires here. Look, they, they, they alter Jason Todd's story a little bit, all right? And the little bit they did, they gave him such a well-fleshed-out backstory. With Corey, it's like, I don't know who I am, but I still remember all these amazing things somehow. You know, I could do all these amazing things, and I'm uber-powerful. And not only do I not have a problem killing, but I'm happy to laugh about it. Sorry, you do realize that's the very definition. I know there's a lot of people who like to come to um, to, to different YouTube channels, um, and they're not looking for someone else's opinion. They're looking for their own opinion to be verified. Well, sorry if you like Starfire, because I don't. I don't like the, 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 the Starfire character in this particular show. That's called a, an opposing opinion. Um, it's not well fleshed out, and she is way too powerful for someone who shouldn't know anything, literally. If you don't know your name, you shouldn't know all these other things also. You, that's just not the way that amnesia works. It, it's not. It's not. Go look at a movie called Regarding Henry. Um, to, for more on that, you'll see a whole lot about how the, how amnesia actually works. Not like in this show where it's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, there's a point that I was going to try and make, uh, with, with, with Corey, I feel that the biggest problem is, here it is, is that she is a homicidal maniac. Let's just, let's just face facts. All right. She's homicidal. In the comic book, she doesn't have a sense that lets her know who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. Who to shoot, who not to shoot. Who to kill, who not to kill. She just kills willy-nilly whoever. Um, there were a couple of times in this episode also, very small moments, where it was just the perfect, like like case in point, um, how did the melting man know that Dick Grayson was, was Robin? Dick Grayson is in a room full of detectives. He's talking to a detective. And this kid walks out and this just absolute weak-minded little kid is just, hey, my daddy, you allowed my daddy to die after he murdered your family. So now I'm going to get revenge on you. Yeah, puss. The pussification of, of characters, man. Um, 
what do you call it? So he turns around and suddenly he's able to figure out it was easy to deduce that you were actually really then why are you such a jackass in every other aspect of your life just out of curiosity hmm? so uh the the acid when it touches you it doesn't burn it it's far worse it's like bugs eating through your flesh i still feel shut up you baby here's the strong man who just got hit he's like ah, oh 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 ah. okay no i'm good i'm good i'm good that sounds like burning to me <laughs> <laughs> um, um, you know, like, like, like so it, it's like saying, you know, when this guy punches you, man, he, he hits harder than anybody else. He's going to knock you out. He's going to break your face. And then he hits somebody and the guy's just like, ow, yeah, that hurt. That was pretty good. Huh? See? No, that's not C. He didn't break his face. The guy didn't die. He's perfectly okay. He's just going to have a little bit of brute. He's perfectly fine. What the frick, man? You just don't know how to take a punch. That's your problem. And that's the problem with this, you know, this melting man character. He just doesn't know how to take a punch. He's a puss. He's a little wussy. He's a sissy. Um, uh, what do you call it? Again, again, that actually makes for a good, strong Batman character. But facts are facts. <laughs> um, right, just take the Riddler, for example. Um, with 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 Starfire, though. Sorry, back to that I, again. I'm sick, guys. Just my mind is kind of all over the place. She's just uh, whatever. She laughing at killing people. Sorry, even Robin's not doing that. Robin's beating people up. Maybe he's killing people. Okay, but afterwards, just like. You can't control it. It's a problem. It's this. It's that. And Starfire is just like, hee hee, <laughs> incinerating people, turning them to ash, literally like putting them in the incinerator, and then just, hmm, and then walking away, and not showering. Oh my god, what the frig? <laughs> so yeah, just no. But in this episode, I liked that they didn't give a whole lot of Starfire. And I know they're not going to go back and start reshooting, but I'm really hoping that as we go forward, we start to slowly reintroduce the Starfire character a little bit closer to the comic book. I'm sorry, like, this is one of those things that always bugs me about Fox and Sony doing these, uh, and Universal when they were doing it, um, these superhero movies, you know, uh, including Lionsgate. Why are you making, here's this comic book. Why don't you just pretty much translate this to film? Why not just do that? It doesn't make sense not to. Um, and, and I just always said, these are people who don't really understand comic books, who are in the comic book, you know, movie making business. What a shame. We're never going to truly love these movies, especially when we've got something like the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe out, that actually does it right. Uh, we're not going to put up with these nonsensical movies. So why is it that DC is putting out nonsensical movies that just, they're so radically different from the comic books, so different. And yet they think, oh, they're gonna love this take on, stop trying to do a take on the character and just do the damn character. How hard is that? Hey, you wanna do something else later on? Fine, but establish who the characters really are because this these are the characters that we loved this is the version the original version of the characters that we originally loved you know what i'm saying um the comic books have done it batman used to use guns back in the day now he doesn't because we we preferred this we definitely prefer this version so why would you turn around and you know batman's going after me he's got a shotgun in his hand yeah that's exactly what i want to say i want to see batman with a freaking shotgun in his hand that makes sense but he's going up against doomsday Shh. It's Batman with a shotgun in his hand. So, likewise in this, why are they making Starfire so radically different? Man, Beast Boy, can you imagine if they made Beast Boy? Look at Beast Boy in this episode. Can I be a Robin? Can I be a Robin? Oh my God, my heart was melting. That's Beast Boy. Okay, his skin's not green. That still pisses me off. But, oh my God, that's Beast Boy. He's acting like Beast Boy. He's being told to act like Beast Boy. Um, could you imagine if they made Beast Boy a homicidal killer? If he was the type who's just like, oh yeah, man, I eat people all the time when I'm a tiger. No, he turned around and he was like, no, I've never actually, I've never even bitten anybody, at least while I've eaten somebody. Ew. Like, that's Beast Boy. It's so easy to love this character because, you know, it's our character. That's a character that we grew up with. 
Starfire is not the character we grew up with. She's so radically different. <laughs> like, I couldn't imagine if they made Beast Boy somebody who killed people. Like, what are you thinking? Anyway, so, um, a couple, a couple other points about this. I noticed that there was no Commissioner Gordon in Gotham City, and that's important to, to understand because Dick Grayson, uh, excuse me, um, Jason Todd mentioned, he's like, what? There's only two kinds of cop, um, stupid ones or bad ones or corrupt ones, you know, like whatever the, the exact quote that he made, that's pretty much what he said. He's pretty much saying there's no difference. You know what I'm saying? They're either on the take or they're stupid, <laughs> you know? Um, hey, there's a third category. They're stupid on the take <laughs> or they're on the take and they're therefore they're stupid. They're stupid for being on the take, whatever. They're, they're pretty much the same cops. He, he doesn't like these cops. They're dumb. They deserve to get beaten up because they used to beat up on him when he was, um, when he was a kid. That happens. That happens. I can understand, you know? Um, what do you call it? So, so by him saying that, he obviously has not had a single interaction with Jim Gordon, because if he had, he wouldn't have said that, or it would have been something different. So there's apparently no Jim Gordon in the DC universe. If there is, then I'm going to need that to go back and be re-explained, because that just doesn't make any sense to me. You, if he would have said, even that Jim Gordon guy, you know, like if 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 um if Dick Grayson would be like, what about Jim Gordon? You know, was, he could have turned around and be like, even him. Uh, yeah, he acts all goody two shoes, but I'll bet you there's something under there. That right there would have been enough for me to be like, okay, I get it, I get it. But there was no mention. So in my head canon, I've got to say there is no Jim Gordon. That could actually explain a lot. That could explain a lot why Batman is apparently, you know, this dark. There's no Jim Gordon. Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have any faith in the police system. He doesn't have any, um any trust that things are actually going to be done. There is no hope. There is no light at the end of the tunnel. That's what Jim Gordon is for Batman. So that would explain why he's so dark and therefore training uh, Dick Grayson, trained Dick Grayson, is currently training Jason Todd to be so dark. You know, that, it makes sense. It, it makes perfect sense to me. So that's what this issue, this that's what this episode did for me. It got me thinking about the world. It got me caring about the world. And there wasn't a whole lot in this episode to take me out of the world. Like if you have this, if all the surface stuff is good, I can start to put my mind into your world. Like this, this episode is teaching me how to write. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is a great lesson for how to write. You want to have a great backstory. Cool. Don't have anything that's in the foreground just take you out of the story because then you're too busy focusing on that. You're not seeing what's going on behind the surface. You're not paying attention to what's going on behind the scenes. I should have said under the surface, but you get what I'm saying. So much. There's so much to unpack in this episode. I love this. I might actually decide to go back and watch this episode, like just this episode again. This was so good. So deep. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, I think I touched on everything. But no, I'm pretty sure there's a whole bunch of stuff I missed. And if I did, by all means, please, comments. Um, we'll talk about it. Real talk. This was such a great episode. All right, guys. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.